Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Doing great. I'm Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer? <laughs> hey, Jennifer? <laughs> okay, that's a nice name. You call me Jen. How old are you, Jen? 41. Okay, okay. Now, what brings you out here to Camden, New Jersey? Drugs. Closer to my addiction. Easier to get to them. Oh, okay, okay. And and how did you end up out here? I got tired of paying for hotels. It's just too much money. So I went up renting a room on the street. You rent a room? Mm -hmm. You do that now or? Okay, okay, okay. And how do you make money to afford these drugs? So you keep it real? I suck dick. <laughs> mm. Suck dick. You saw my pussy. <laughs> And how much do you accumulate? I don't normally look that bad, but I'm really no less than like 200 a day. 200 a day? But it all goes to drugs. Every single penny goes to drugs. It makes you sick when you think about how much you make. And you're like, oh, that could be a bill, or that could be you know, half my rent for a month. Like, you know, it's disgusting. You know, when you look down at your arms and do you have more gross. <laughs> And what's your drug of choice, if you don't mind me asking? Crack heroin. And how often do you take crack or heroin? Dope, um, I'm down to like maybe four nicks a day, but crack all day, every day. Because the crack eats the dope. When's the last time you've been asleep? I got a little bit last night. A little bit, maybe two hours. I've been up for like almost five days. What was your life like before drugs? I was like a PTA mom. I drove a minivan. Uh -huh. I've got four kids. Mm. And my daughter, I haven't, uh, she just turned 17, but I haven't seen her since she was nine. Mm. Eight years. <laughs> you plan on getting back in your daughter's life? Um, for my kids? Yeah. But not like this. Not like this, because I don't want to be an in and out mom. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. I shouldn't even cry over it because I don't, I don't deserve to. I've had plenty of chances to straighten up. How, how did your drug addiction start? Well, it just started. I suppressed things. I had a mom that would sit like this at the attic door, like like this, like a bouncer. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't come out the door where her husband was upstairs raping me. Mm. So, instead of like crying about it and playing the victim, I just suppress it and yeah, go to reality, go to, go to, um, take reality out, you know, you don't want to face it. A lot of us do that. At what age did you start using? Uh, probably around 30. Around 30. Heroin, I didn't start using until I was 37, 37. Do you I have any, do you have a job? You have a, uh, a no. good life? Tricking. You know, before that, he won't underestimate it. I used to be an assistant manager for two Walmarts. Mm -hmm. Three dollar trees. Mm -hmm. You know, it just goes to show you though, it, it, it's anywhere, it can hit anybody. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter who you are, what you're doing, what profession, what reason, nothing. It is everywhere. The preacher, the pastor, the deacon's son on Lansdowne. His son is a man. Mm. If you could have three wishes right now, what would they be? To be sober for myself. Sober, completely clean. Get back into my kids' lives. Mm -hmm. For my kids to amount to something more than I did. That's my wishes. Your third? My third. My kids. I want them to amount to something. I don't want them to follow my footsteps. So I want the best for them. So my wish is for me to be with them, but also for them to be better in life. I, well, I don't want them to follow my footsteps. Right. How was your childhood and your upbringing? My childhood was full of. Heartache, abuse. Um, my grandparents raised me from the time I was eight and up. They got me from foster care. I was in California. 
the dog disappeared with me out there. But um, she didn't want me, so she called Dyfus and told him to take me. Literally. So, I mean, it was a normal childhood. I mean, but then again, it, it wasn't normal. A father doesn't punch you in your eye. You know, you don't, you don't, you shouldn't say bloody towels that you know from him hitting your mom. What would you say with all the obstacles you faced in life has been your hardest? To get clean. To be clean. I can't do it. And, I'm into, and I don't want to be on some boxing. I don't want to be on methadone. I don't want to be on any daily maintenance because it's still an addiction. It's still something you're relying on. I mean, hey, hey, that's just my opinion. That's for each to each his own. But just me personally, I don't want to wake up every day and if I don't have methadone, if I don't have a suboxone, then I'm still sick. So when I get off dope, I don't want to be on anything, nothing. Have you tried any recovery programs at all? I did a detox once, like three years ago. I left early because I was too worried about my husband. Your husband? Basically. I was married for 15 years, but legally, but this one's not my husband. He's just I've been with him for seven years. Okay, and um, is he still in your life at all? Or? Yeah. Oh, he is? Is he, is he running these streets too? Or? Yeah. No. He's, he uses. He don't do... Uh, he don't do nothing. I support him. Isn't that typical? Um, most of us prostitutes, the one I'm taking care of our men, why they do nothing. It's typical, right? Now, is it difficult out here prostituting? Well, right now we have a couple predators on the list. And I'm glad you joined us. We actually have someone that's killing the girls, the lucky girls, and stashing them in the uh, They're finding their bodies down on Jackson behind the tracks. He's got like seven girls so far. Sorry to hear that. How do you stay safe out here? <laughs> I don't really run by myself at nighttime. It's dangerous at nighttime, it's dangerous, isn't it? It's dangerous, ain't the word. We have a couple of them. I mean, I had somebody pull my hair the other day to try to get me back in the car. He went, and then when I got out, he's like, I'll be back for you in an hour. Like, to hurt me. Like, nothing has ever scared me the way that he did. I've been robbed, I've been hung at gunpoint, I've been stripped of my clothes, I've been victimized in the back end, and you don't show no fear. But this guy, fear, I fear. The look in his eyes was something sick. Sick. So, it's sick, yeah. What would you tell a young person out here running these streets, just now starting to use? Look at me, and look at everybody you pass on the streets that don't have their shoes on, or got sores on their legs, or, or rips. It's gonna be you in no less than two months. It goes quick. Yeah, it goes quick. I managed to somehow keep my weight up. What were your hobbies like before drugs? Being a mom, that was just my hobby. That was my main hobby, just being a mom. A lot of hobbies come with that territory. How much do you miss your kids? <laughs> there ain't no words for that. There's no words. There's no words at all. There's no words at all for that. You believe they love you? Believe anybody loves you? God. But I question him every day too. You're spiritual, right? Believe in God. But I question him. I curse him out a lot. It's going why he lets me wake up every day to this shit. But it's not him, it's me. Or he gives over. me the tools, I just don't use them like. Right. You know, can't put blame on nobody but myself. Nobody. Right. Where do you see yourself in five years? I'm not here. It's where I see myself doesn't necessarily not be there. I see myself out of here or dead. One or the other. There's only two. Two options. Do you believe the government can fix this problem at all? This drug problem out here in Camden, New Jersey? It's 
be honest, I don't know. You can you can sit there and bust as many sets as you want. They're right back out in 20 minutes. It's everywhere you go. You can't hide from it. It's easy to obtain. Correct. I mean, when I was in detox in Patterson, I was walking outside, and there's a set right there. Right there. Well, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. You told a wonderful story. It's been a wonderful interview with <laughs> All Time Media. Pray for you. Thank you.